Hello! Let's see if we can get through a chapter without yawning ten times. Key 15. The Devil. Oh, Amy. From Paul Foster Cases the Tarot, a key to the wisdom of the ages, we enter chapter 14. Ain. Letter O, value 70, means I, and foundation. It signifies also the external, superficial appearances of things. As the organ of sight, the eye is the most important sense tool. Hence, symbolists take it to represent all sensation, just as the lion, king of beasts, is taken as the represent representative of all subhuman modes of life expression. The eye is an orb. Vision is limited by the circle of the horizon. Through the eye we see appearances only. Hence the eye represents the limitations of the visible, and the bondage of ignorance resulting from the acceptance of, of these limitations and appearances as being all there is. Mirth, or laughter, the function of consciousness, attributed by Kabbalists to the letter Ain, is usually provoked by incongruity, by human weakness, foibles, and shortcomings. Nevertheless, laughter is prophylactic, and purifies subconsciousness, and dissolves mental complexes and conflicts. In a hymn to the sun god Ra, we read, Thy priests go forth at dawn, they wash their hearts with laughter. This is a prescription we may all follow to advantage. West below, the direction assigned to Ain, combines West, key 10, the Wheel of Fortune, with below, key 2, the High Priestess. Here is an intimation that whatever is denoted by key 15 is the result of impressions made by the apparently mechanical, fatal revolutions of circumstance, the Wheel of Fortune, upon human subconsciousness, the High Priestess. On the cube of space, the line west below connects the lower line of the of the line northwest to the lower end of the line southwest. It is the lower boundary of the western face of the cube, or in the western bound or the western boundary of the lower face. <sighs> One. Capricorn, the goat is a cardinal earthly sign, governing the knees, to which we are brought in, brought to, by prayer, brought in prayer, what, what, to which we are brought in prayer by our sense of bondage and personal insufficiency, T to which we are brought in prayer by our sense of bondage and personal insufficiency, oh, okay, he, he's suggesting that, that the notion of kneeling to pray to God is shitty. Which I agree with. <clears throat> if, you, if you knelt to my God to pray to him, he would probably throw something at you. He, my God is one of those, like, say it with your chest type motherfuckers. <laughs> the natives of Capricorn are said to be quiet, studious, and somewhat inclined to materialism. Saturn, key 21, the world, rules Capricorn and Mars. Key 16, the tower, is exalted therein. The color correspondence is blue, violet, or indigo. The musical tone is A natural. <sighs> Dose. Bitch. <clears throat> what? No, let's skip to that. Yeah, my fan on, excuse me. Renewing intelligence is the mode of consciousness attributed to Ain. This is directly related to mirth, because the perception of incongruities is what actually brings forth new ideas and adaptations. An incongruity is something which does not fit. When we find a fact that does not fit in with our beliefs, we are obliged to revise our theories, unless we are the sort of green apple who prefers... A comfortable lie to an uncomfortable truth. Meow. Meow. Baby face. Thank you, Takano. Okay. 
It has been, indeed, the incongruity between man's apparent bondage. Stop flashing. God damn. It's so annoying. See it at the corner of my eye. It has been, indeed, the incongruity between man's apparent bondage to circumstances and his ineradicable intuition that somehow or, no, or other he is intended to rule nature, which was driven, which has driven the race forward in those avenues of research, which lead to freedom. <sighs> Three. Internally. We know that we are potential lords of creation, but here we meet a cheek, and there a defeat, a check, excuse me, but here we, we meet a check, and there a defeat, why, 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 why are you doing this to me? Stop flashing. And so we try to explain why we are not actually as free as we feel ourselves internally to be. The symbolism of Key 15 represents the cruder forms of man's answers to the question, what keeps me from expressing this inner freedom I feel. At the same time, this picture indicates the correct solution to the problem, and points to the way which leads out of the difficulty. 4. The devil is the English for the Latin diab diablus. Di Diabolus. <laughs> Diabolus. Adversary. The picture refers to man's ideas concerning the nature of that which seems so relentlessly to oppose his struggles for freedom. In commenting on this, let us once more remind you of the words ascribed to Jehovah in Isaiah 45. Remember, too, that the devil personifies the serpent power represented by the letter Teth in Key 8, Strength. The name for the serpent which... Stop flashing! Stop! Stop moving! Right. What are you doing?! Stop it! You annoying shit! You didn't do this for the other videos. Something to go... Which one are you... Which one of you people does not want to, to hear this book? I swear. Come on now. It's insane. That doesn't count as five. Internally, we know that we are potential lords of creation. Hold on. Did not miss the spot? It has been cured to man's fair bondage, and we know to process of particular post struggles. Remember, too, that the devil personifies the serpent power, which represents, which, what, what, the serpent power, which is represented by the letter Teth and Key 8, strength. The name for the serpent which tempted Eve is N-C-H-S-H, -S -S or Nakash. And the number of this word is 358, the value of M-S-H-I-C-H, -S -S Messiah. Here is a profound subtlety for n for numeric numer numerically no for numerical identity between Hebrew words points to some inner correspondence of meaning. Finally, it has been said, the devil is God and he is misunderstood by the wicked. <clears throat> I can buy that. I had a weird experience where I met the guy. The number of the trump is fifteen which is the number of I-H, Ja, the divine name especially ascribed to wisdom. The same number is shown by the number of tray folds on the next page, on the tiara of the Hierophant. Excuse me, the tarot cards don't touch the ground. Especially described wisdom. The same number is shown by the number of trayfuls on the tiara of the Hierophant. By addition of digits, 15 reduces to 6, the number of the lovers. Furthermore, 15 is the sum of the numbers from 0 through 5. So, so that the Hierophant, 5, 
regarded as the summation of a series beginning with zero, refers also to key 15. Compare now the devil with the lovers and the hierophant. I just did a video about my magic table idea, and the hierophant popped up in the pattern, so that's really cool. The background of key 15 is black, color of darkness, ignorance, limitation, and also of that which is hidden or occult. Ignorance is an excellent word choice because the, the information is not inaccessible. It is not non-existent from your field of mind. It is right there. You need only put forth the effort to grab it. Do not be ignorant. Here is an intimation that ignorance is the underlying cause of bondage. A hint also that the ridiculous figure of the devil is a veil for a profound secret of practical occultism. The devil himself is the polar opposite of the angel shown in the preceding major trunk. He is also a caricature of the angel over the heads of the lovers, even as the figures below him are, be are bestia bestialized reproductions of the man and the woman in key six. <coughs> Goats, horns, on his head refer to the sign Capricorn, his wings are bat's wings, signifying the power, powers of darkness. His face is that of a goat, but he has the ears of a donkey, to suggest the uh, obstin obstinacy, what? Obstinacy, I don't know what that word is, and stubbornness of materialism. His body is thickest, is thick set and gross and of an earthen color, to represent the earthly, earthy quality of the sign Capricorn. One side is masculine, the other feminine, because what he represents partakes of the characteristics of both sexes, which is just weird. <laughs> Between his horns is a white inverted pentagram. This is a key to the whole meaning of the figure. For the pentagram is a symbol of man. And an inverted pentagram suggests the reversal of true understanding of man's place in the cosmos. In point of fact, the mistaken estimate of man's powers and possibilities is all that keeps anyone in, in bondage. The devils, the, did I just say devils? The devils, the la, 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 uplifted right hand has all its fingers open, as if in con as ah, as if in contradiction to the sign of esotericism made by the Hierophant. Okay. The latter's gesture says, what you see is not all there is to know. The devil's gesture intimates what what sensation reports is all there is to know, is all there is to it. Ah, excuse me. On the palm of this uplifted hand is outlined an astrological symbol of the planet Saturn, ruling in Capricorn. Saturn is the planet of limitation, inertia, and therefore of ignorance. In his left hand is a torch. <sighs> that one counts as five. In his left hand is a torch, burning wastefully and giving little light. The torch is a phallic symbol representing the transmission of life from generation to generation. Its fiery quality refers also to the exaltation of the Mars vibration in Capricorn. In one sense, this is the fiery torch of revolution, because on materialistic interpretations of experience, the torch of terrorism and anarchy. <laughs> Blah. Is that six? Yeah, I think so. Ugh. It may be worth mentioning that this devil has a navel. He is a human product, begotten of man's ignorance. A symbol of Mercury is shown just below his navel. Did I say you could blink? Did I say you could start flashing? Yeah, excuse you, phone. God damn it. Seven. <clears throat> a symbol of Mercury is shown just below his navel to indicate that he is a product of faulty observation and superficial reasoning. I don't understand that, but okay. Bitch. Bitch. Stop. Stop it. Stop it.
Stab it. Just, just stab it. Okay. Then. His feet are the claws of an eagle. Those are called talons, Paul. The eagle is the bird corresponding to the sign Scorpio. Here, the eagle's claws refer to the materialization and misuse of the reproductive power, and its debasement in the service of sensuality. Yeah, don't be a slut, goddamn. <laughs> the devil sits on a, pedis- on a pedestal which is a half cube, since a cube represents that which was, is, and shall be. <sighs> Eight. A half cube symbolizes half knowledge of that reality. Half knowledge perceives nothing but the visible, sensory side of existence. To this half cube are. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! My god. The devil sits on the pedestal which has to use his representative. To this half cube are chained smaller figures representing self-conscious and subconscious modes of human mentality. Their horns, hooves, and tails show that when reasoning takes its premise from surface appearances, human consciousness becomes bestialized. Observe that, though they are chained to the cube, the loops of the chains are so large that they might lift them off their heads. Their bondage is imaginary. This picture represents the first stage of spiritual unfoldment. It is the stage of stop blinking. No way. Just, yeah, yeah. This picture is the Lord. It is the stage of conscious bondage. The devil personifies the false conception that man is bound by material conditions. The false notion that he is a slave to necessity. A spot of chance. In truth, the forces which appear to be our adversaries are always ready to serve us. The one condition is that we understand our essential freedom and take account of the hidden side of existence, your own personal sovereignty. Then, when we conform our practice to our knowledge, knowing the rules, liberation begins. Orgasm. The devil is sensation. Divorced by ignorance from understanding. Ugh. Yet he is also what brings renewal. Because we can make no real effort to be free until we feel our limitations. Yes, you must be in bondage to be free. What if you are bound to yourself? Because we can make no real effort to be free until we free and feel our limitations. Until they irk us, we can make no effort to strike off our chains. And pragmatically, this is so. You don't know to do anything unless you have a sensation indicating you in a particular direction. If you were to eat all the time... Stop it! Stop it! Stop Stop, stop flashing fun. If you were to eat all the time without being hungry then you would have several problems, in fact. This is, that would not be good. In addition, I think this is what Blavatsky and them were getting at when they say that the devil came down to earth. He descended, he did not fall, they believe. And that it is... Something that we need to be grateful for. He's doing us a favor of some kind. He's making a great sacrifice to show us the way. And if you believe the stories about the extraterrestrials traveling back in time to save their own race, us, then it makes a certain kind of sense, doesn't it? But they've been here quite some time. Anyhow, do enjoy your day.